Hey, it's Phil Ratcliffe with Rebel Financial, and thanks so much for tuning in again to one of our live streams. Today we've got our special Veterans, well, I guess it's early Veterans Day because tomorrow's Veterans Day uh, special. We've got Brian Kennedy here from Build a Gun. Thanks so much, Brian, for coming. Absolutely. Um, he does some really awesome work building custom firearms for people, and so we wanted to share that with you guys. Um, and see uh, some of the softer side of some of the bad things that we've seen on TV because this is just like anything else for people. It's, right. it's our right. We have collections. Some people just like to shoot like other people like to play tennis. Absolutely. And it's okay. And there's tons of us that have served and whether it's police or military or whatever, um, and there are tons, tons more responsible gun owners than there are the bad eggs out there. So let's look at this. But first, Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came uh, to where you are and, and started and build a gun. Um, I, my background is I've worked on guns from a very young age on. Mm -hmm. um, so your dad liked it or? It was a family friend. Yeah. Um, my okay. parents, we only had one gun in our house, a hunting gun and that was <laughs> it. Um, but they'd send me over to a friend's, a family friends and he was big in the guns. Um, but my background is, um, Painting cars. I painted uh -huh. cars for 26 years. Wow. Um, always played with guns in the background, stuff like that. Um, medical reasons, I couldn't paint cars anymore, so I moved on to opening my dream, my gun store. Doing something a little bit more fine rather than the yep, big stuff, right? Yep, yep, yeah, something more enjoyable. Um, and that's just where we come from. I mean, we, we work very hard. And, <laughs> and that's what I said earlier is like, you know, you think about all of like what we're talking about and, you know, and, and and when you were explaining to me, I'm like, you're really an artist, though, you know? I've so, been called that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. So tell us a little bit about what types of firearms that you customize. What's the most popular after you get through that? Too? So our store is basically specializes in the AR-15 platform. Okay. Um, mostly we can do anything, though. We can customize anything from pistols. Um, we do a lot of Cerakoting, um, mm -hmm. which is a, a type of ceramic paint. It's two-part epoxy. Um, but we can do, I did a guy's sunglasses the other day. Yeah. So there is, is anything you can imagine we can do. Um, and that's, and it's, it's amazingly resilient. You were telling me because right. I was like, how durable is that? And you right. were telling, so tell, tell everybody like the difference between like the, the manufacturer versus what you right. guys do. Yeah. So, um, Serico had sent all stuff for an independent study and basically it's a wear test and it's this little cylinder that just wears on it and they count rotations. Um, bluing lasted like 200 rotations and it hit the bare metal. Um, the Serica lasted 16, 1700 rotations before it hit the bare metal. That's awesome. So if you do have a firearm that you really like, that you want something personalized, this is not just like something right, right. like aesthetic. It's actually going to protect yep. your We do a lot of hunting, a shotguns, lot rifles, yeah. things like that. Guys walking through weeds and don't want them to get scratched up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Serico did another study. They took two exact same rifles, <clears throat> excuse me, and set them outside. One was Serico and one was just factory. Um, left them there for just a year. The elements. Yep, for oh, one wow. year. The Serico one had a little bit of rust on the edges and stuff like that, but it was still worked. The factory one, they couldn't even open the bolt up on it. It was wow. so rusted. So yeah. it is a very good product and it holds up very, very well. That's cool. That's cool. So. Let's look at some of the examples of your work. Um, I think we, we have your main website up here, which is buildagun.biz. But, um, oh, I keep trying to do my touch screen now <laughs> that we updated this. But you were telling us, like, a lot of times your Facebook page is even better because you right. guys post so yeah, we, much. And, of course, what you do, it, it needs uh, an audience to appreciate the work absolutely. that you put into it. Uh, but we pulled up some examples here. And if you want to just describe a little bit on each one, I'll click so and let So this is a, a Spikes lower. They call it the Jack. Um, it is an SBR. We are a class three dealer, so we can do machine guns, suppressors, so okay. on and so forth. Um, this is one of my custom builds. Um, everybody wanted me to do a skull gun to show it off. Those and, are cool. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular right now. Um, so this is just the example of the way out there design you can do. Mm -hmm. um, we do some basic stuff too. Let's go to, on to the next one there. Yep. This is my one of my coworkers slash business partner. Um, this is his SBR. It's 300 uh -huh. blackout. Um, Anderson lower. Um, people say a lot of bad things about the Anderson product, but we want to build an SBR that has his name engraved in it if we didn't think it was a good product. Yeah. I mean, that right there, of all the parts, grand total, and that's probably about a $2,000 rifle. Yeah, that's and pretty. It, and then it like all matches together. Right. And yeah. it almost looks like worn. 
Yep. You know? yeah, it, that, yeah. That's what they call it. This is battle worn is the name yeah. for that particular scheme paint job. That's cool. Let's look at the next one. And this is one of the hunter guys. Um, this was a 300 blackout also. He does a lot of hog hunting. Okay. And he wanted a tiger stripe Vietnam style era um, camouflage job. We had to change it up a little bit, make the stripes a little smaller than what it would have been originally. Mm -hmm. But um, he fell in love with it. Yeah. yeah. And just, then it's got the cutout. Yep. Yeah, he wanted a skeletonized well grip on it. It's yeah. um, that's all timber Greek parts, um, Magpul buttstock. Uh, once again, an Anderson lower, um, but he was extremely thrilled about it. Awesome. So let's look at this. So looking at a handgun. Yeah, right that's. Um, an older CZ-75, it was a police trade-in. The gun come into the store, just beat up, and I bought it. To so it's got history and, absolutely. and character. Yep. It's, yeah. um, it's so old, it says the Republic of Czechoslovakia on it. Instead of, <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see it, it right there. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, I completely rebuilt the inside of it, changed out all the springs, rebarreled it, um, and then we did a Cerakote job to fix the finish because the finish of, Coming in out of a police officer's holster was sure. just it's probably got some nice nicks in it though. Oh yeah, yeah, like a lot of neat though. character you for know, the battle yeah, worn. Yeah. Cool. And then the last one we'll take a look at right here. I thought this one was yep. awesome looking. This one is my once again my business partner slash coworker. Um, he did this one for his son. It's a, once again a CZ seventy five B. It's in forty caliber. Uh, he wanted the skeletonized grips to kind of set it off. And then we Cerakoted the magazine white, too. So when you put the magazine you in there, you see can it see it. There. That's uh, awesome. It turned out really, really that's sweet. Cool. So you guys could almost do anything that somebody... I has. haven't come across as long anything as you don't I mess could up do. the operation of right, the, right. the weapon. Right? And yeah. I check them all out to make sure they're still functional before I send them out. Mm -hmm. um, very stickler on safety. Um, the gun has to function the way it came in. Sure. Um, the last thing I want is anybody to get hurt. On well, the main thing, you probably just don't mess with the chamber and the Right, right. And the we barrel, plug right? all that off. You know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. We protect all the springs and stuff. When we surrogate a gun, it completely comes apart. We don't yeah. leave any parts on it, so it completely gets disassembled. And why I do that, I check everything, too. If there's a spring messed up or something looks weak or whatever, I'll tell the customer, hey, look, and I'll show it to them. Maybe we should consider replacing this part. Sure. Um, Okay. And a lot of times parts are really cheap. That's awesome. That's great work. So there's one thing you wanted to mention as well, too, which was uh, your holiday drive. Right, so let's, right. Uh, um, let's put that out there. I'm always about giving back. I mean, I, I've been very blessed in my life and so on and so forth. Um, and we got to do that. If more people did that, sure. the world would be a better place. Absolutely. So what we're doing right now at Build a Gun is you bring in a new toy, put it in the box. You get a raffle ticket to win an AR build kit. It's a complete AR um, wow. But you got to pass a background check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But yeah, it's um, it's a Deltron upper lower parts kit and Anderson lower. It's about six hundred dollar value. That's so you cool. go buy a ten dollar toy, drop it in the box, and you can win a six hundred dollar AR. Yeah. So I mean, do something good. Maybe you get something good. Yeah. Right. Right. Karma. Yep. Karma is a huge <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So so those are awesome. So let's talk about something. You know, just a little bit more getting back into it. You were mentioning like background checks and what mm -hmm. so. So, you know, what are some of the rules in Ohio to gun ownership? And you even said you work outside of, of Ohio all, right. all across the country because yeah. you guys are building your yeah. name. Um, basically, in Ohio, to buy a firearm, you got to be a, have an Ohio driver's license. Um, immigrants are okay as long as they have the the right number and the immigrant number. I can't mm -hmm. remember the name of it. The green um, card. Or, green card. Yep. Yeah. They have to be a, a permanent resident. Mm -hmm. um, but it basically it comes down to you got to be Ohio citizen. Um, gun stores are the first line of defense. Yeah. Um, when you come in the store, we not only do we do a background check on you, the ATF gives us the ability that if we don't think you should have a firearm, to just say no. Just say no. And yeah. they give us a spot on the form to write in that and stuff like that. And it has happened to where we, not us, but other stores have had just to go to court. weren't sure that somebody right. was stable or yep. something. And, like and yeah. a lot of times you get somebody depressed or whatever and they, they want to do something bad and they'll come in and we have to kind of judge that. And we have had to do that in the past. Um, it's, it's the bad things and they advertise the bad stuff sure. so heavily. And it's sensationalized. Right, yeah. that they don't look at the good sides of stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't look at when someone actually saves somebody with a gun. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the other things in Ohio, when you're traveling with a, a gun, if you don't have a CCW, the ammo's got to be separate from the firearm. It yeah. can't be together. Because um, I remember it used to be you had to keep it in the trunk and the glove box. Right. But now I think it's like 
you have to physically have to get out of your car to get to it or something like right. that. Right. That well, yeah, you can't just like be able to reach it in the back right. seats or something. And with the yeah. the how popular SUVs became and stuff like that, it's really mm -hmm. hard to put them in two sure. compartments. So that's absolutely right. You can have them all in the same gun bag, but it has to be all the way in the back to where you can't just reach back there and get it. Yeah. Um, you're absolutely right, though. It had to be separated at one time, and that was just kind of ridiculous. I remember that, and then I remember something changed, and I don't even yeah, <laughs> I can't was, recall anybody telling me that when this had ago. happened or yeah. what. So, yeah. yeah. And then you mentioned the uh, concealed carry. Right. Um, so maybe tell us a little bit about that. I think we're both concealed carry, but absolutely. a lot of people, there's probably a lot of misconception. Right. Well, about concealed that. carry, you don't actually have to carry a gun to have your I don't carry. most of the time. Yeah, I just either. have the ability to. Absolutely. Yeah. It gives you the yeah. right to do that. Mm -hmm. um, concealed carry, you just have to make sure you um, look on any place you go into, make sure they don't have the sign, because mm -hmm. that is uh, trespassing, is what you can be charged with mm -hmm. there. Um, obviously, you can't go in churches, federal buildings, so on and so forth. Um, but once you do have your concealed carry, you can carry your firearm with you in the car loaded. Mm -hmm. um, if you do get pulled over, you have to announce, as of right now, they're working on changing that, but you have to announce to the police officer that you have a firearm, you do have concealed carry. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, they're appreciative of that. Um, sure. It's, it's tied to your driver's license. Well, you're not license. doing anything wrong. It's better than them catching a glimpse of something and being right, freaked right, out. Right, right, right. Well, I tell yeah. everybody, police officers have the right to go home, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of bad things happen. And there are some bad cops, but there's a lot of good cops out there that... Um, they, I mean, right now they're on the edge, and I don't sure. blame them. Yeah, me but um, yeah, you just tell them you have a gun, and a lot of times they're pretty cool about it, and they appreciate that. When they run your license plates, they know. Yeah, yeah. So, I know. I've got a couple paranoid friends that won't get their CCW because yeah. they think it's like the government's cow. <laughs> right, <laughs> and I, I, with what I do, I deal with that all the time. We have, yeah. the, I call them paranoids. <laughs> yeah. They come in all the time, but I, that's their right. And sure, I mean, sure, right. if you've ever done a background check. The information that they collect isn't your name or anything. All they do is collect the fact that a firearm is sold, mm -hmm. and whether it's a rifle, pistol, or shotgun, um, receiver, so on and so forth. They want to know the category it was and the time and date. That's yeah. all they collect. They don't collect your name. They don't collect anything. All that information is supposed to be deleted. So they don't have any of that. But you have it in case something happens, they could come back to you, Yeah, right? I have so paper like forms. if a crime is it happens, right. there's still a paper trail. Absolutely. It's just we just don't need the government cataloging everything. Right, right. They that, don't need that's, the information. Uh, that's where the yeah. Second Amendment comes in very yeah. handy. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, good deal. So, you know, tell us a couple practical, practical things about working with you. Like, how long does it take when somebody wants to hire? I know you have probably some varying based on how busy you are. Right. But on average, how long does it take when somebody wants to do something with you to customize? How well, it all depends. It? Um, we ask our customers to have a, kind of an idea of what they want, but we can walk through every step if they mm -hmm. don't know what they want. Um, it, it truly, honestly, like you said, it varies on what they want done, but um, that's why I have Mark in the store with me. Sure. Is I'll sit down with somebody until we know exactly what they want because Cerakote's a tough product, and once it's on, it's not okay. so easy to get off. So we I want you to be happy the first time. Right? Yep. Yeah. Um, when they come in to build a gun, I've spent hours with people. Um, wow. My gun store is kind of unique in the fact that, yes, we need to sell stuff to keep our lights on, but it's mm -hmm. not only that. We, we like a lot of gun stores. We have our coffee pot, our chairs sit around them. I build relationships with lots of my customers. Yeah. Um, and when you come in, you become family. Mm -hmm. um, I have guys that come in and tell me their problems. I have guys that come <laughs> in. I mean, it, I was asked to be a pallbearer for one of my customers. I wow. mean, it is, it, that's the aspect I want. You'll sure. never have to come in and take a number to get a gun. You come in, you get attention. Now people understand when they come in a couple of times. We have five or six people in the store. I jump from person to person. Mark does the same thing. But everybody comes in. Normally the first thing they tell us is, I haven't been in a gun store where I felt like coming home. Yeah. It's my home in a long time. You know, it's funny because your 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 business is, is named this, and, and and lots of civilians just call it guns. But I was in the military, and it's like we weren't allowed to call them guns. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the old song about that. But um, it was like firearms and weapons, and they wanted right. to say weapon. And now I'm in the civilian world, and the people that are like trying to protect, like, quit calling it a weapon. What's wrong <laughs> with you? <laughs> well, the only term I don't like is the assault rifle. The assault, yeah. my personal opinion assault in action not a sure. not a substance yeah. and it gives it a bad rep i mean it can be like i said we specialize in ar-15 and it can be anything like we showed a hunt and gun all the way to i shoot competitions to shoot. Yeah. and just having fun i mean yeah. it's a good training platform 
It's the most versatile firearm it's ever. Versatile, built. light, right. you close, far. Yeah. It can everything. be 48 different cartridges. Yeah. So it can be anything wow. from a 22 long rifle all the way up to a 50 Beowulf, which is a 50 caliber round. Wow. So That's, have you done many of those? Done a couple. Those are yeah. rather expensive to build, and it's a niche thing. I mean, it's yeah. it's still running a couple dollars around. It's got to so. be some massive recoil. Uh, not really. They no? they are designed really well to take that. The, yep. the spring, the buffer the back. spring, and stuff. Yeah. Stoner, when he designed the gun, he, he as the original designer of the AR-15, um, he worked for Armalite, mm -hmm. and I mean, he was a genius. He took designs <laughs> from machine guns, from so he didn't one day just come up with everything. He took the best of a few guns and made the AR That's platform. The way to do it. Yep, I'm absolutely. always about like reducing the length of intellectual property because of people like that. It's like right. let people make some money off of what they discover, but at a certain point, let other people build off of it and right. build something exactly. else awesome exactly. in the future. Well, cool. So, what's the cost range, you know, between doing a smaller project, maybe on a handgun, versus a larger well, custom with the skull, you know, <laughs> AR or what right. you know? So, Cerakotin starts out about $35 if you just want some small parts done. Mm -hmm. And it can go up. We've done one, I call it paint jobs, but I get yelled at all the time for that. Um, we did one paint job that was well over $800 for a veteran. That's not bad. I would have thought it'd be more than that on no, the no. side of things. Um, yeah. Other places are. We, we yeah. try to keep our prices very That's fair. That's so cool. Like us, like dealing right. with small companies that don't have right. huge overhead. Right, right. That's right. a nice thing because you can still make good money, but you don't have... 10 people in the middle that got to get paid right plus exactly, shareholders, exactly. You know? it's like you're the worker and the owner yeah. and that's awesome absolutely you know? but so. a basic build starts out about 650 dollars for just the basic ar and mm -hmm. then um we're getting into 1911s because you can build your own 1911 you can believe it or not build your own glock with no glock parts it could be all different company parts <laughs> that's and, cool. um but we're getting you just have in, to get them before they're worn, right? Right, right, right. Well, you can start from nothing. You can yeah. build, you can buy a frame, you can buy a slide barrel, so on and so forth, where you don't even have to buy a Glock part. So right. when we went to Disney, and my my son built his own lightsaber. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. It's the it's the adult version of lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do your mod modifications, are they purely cosmetic, or sometimes? Like you're saying, you're right. mixing and matching. Functional, yeah. um, functional yeah. and cos cosmetic. Um, a lot of guys will come in and they just want their gun to perform better. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of the things we are is we're a part store for the AR. I mean, we literally have everything down to the very small springs all the way up to complete rifles. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you go to range and something's not running right or whatever, I can make the gun do anything you want it to do. So, do you have a place to shoot? Where your thing is to no. diagnose something, or would you have nope. to like just take their word for it or meet them somewhere? No, I take the yeah. gun too. We have a couple friends that have land that let okay. us shoot there. Um, gotcha. We go up to another gun store in, um, up north, Blackwing, which is a very yeah. nice facility. Mm, like Blackwing. Um, we'll go I live there. right beside uh, Vance's too. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't been to that one yet. Um, Blackwing so closer to my awesome house. store. Yeah. Range, indoor range is indoor range. That's my dream someday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> someday I want my own range. We'll get there someday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Baby well, steps. that's a lot. You know, you got to oh, build all that and the yep. environmental stuff. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. I don't, I don't think people appreciate how much uh, oh, it's millions. goes into yeah, that. It's, yeah, it's millions of dollars to have something. I've heard it's really nice. I can only imagine what they've got. Right. three different right. sections yep. of it. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, um, how can people get in touch with you? So basically, um, you can find all of our contact information on buildagun.biz um, mm -hmm. or go to our Facebook gun page. This is the website. And yep, then, that's the website. And then there's the, oh, let me make that go down. And then yep. there's the. It's Build a Gun Facebook. LLC. Um, I have a Facebook page, Brian Kennedy, too. You can go to that one and hit us up there. We do have our phone number, which. Um, it's down it's here. Down. I'm horrible with numbers. I think Jonathan's <laughs> been putting it up at the yeah. bottom, too, as we've been going yeah. through this, so people probably see it. But, yeah, I think the main thing when I just Google you is the Facebook page comes right, up. Right. And then, of course, right down here on the right yeah. is all your contact info, too. Yep, and we... Um, you guys are open pretty late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, we were like the working guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we, like I said, we do a little bit of everything. And you can come in, and if you have a problem, we don't charge the diagnose a problem. You bring a gun in that's not working right, well, they call it a bench fee, and I think that's mm -hmm. a ripoff. They charge people $45, $50 to just look at their gun, and that's not right. I yeah. mean, especially if there's nothing really wrong with it. If I open up a gun and there's a piece of brass or just a burr in there or whatever, I don't normally charge for stuff like that. It's, cool. it's, well, that's how you get people to come back to you right, more, right. in yeah. the future. And that's too. how I build that oh, That's family. how we do our company, too. Right. So. We don't charge on our first one. We got peers that do. Yeah, yeah. I think that's just because they get their head too big. Right. But my yeah. time's always worth something. Well, time is worth something, but yeah. you know, the 
you, you take that personal effect out. You're when saying you do karma, it. right? Well, yeah. Karma is a huge thing. I'm a firm believer. You give in that. before you receive. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, cool. Well, thanks so much for being here, Brian. It was Thank awesome. You. you did a great job. And I appreciate it. I like what you guys do. I told Sweet. you, I've got my 1911s. I'll probably bring in and nice, talk nice. to you about we'll that. We'll hook you up. We'll make it look cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you guys again for sharing a piece of your week and weekend. Um, again, thank you all to veterans out there that have served um, our country um, and sacrificed. Uh, we very much appreciate it. Um, join us next week. We're going to have uh, another great guest in uh, Sharon Cruz with Northwest Counseling to tell us how we can give back and uh, maybe help some youth out in our community, uh, get a great mentor, and uh, put them on the path to uh, a better future. So thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Stay warm. Thank you.